In choosing pieces for this show, I noticed how, without consciously trying to integrate it, my physical environment has crept into my work. Not necessarily in a literal sense, but more in a feeling of the place. My previous work was mostly figurative and fairly personal and internal, so the environment really didn't factor into it. As this is kind of a new thing for me, I think I should tell you a little bit about my environment. I live in New Mexico, about an hour's drive from Albuquerque, in a tiny village. It's hard to even call it a village. It's really just a post office and some small farms. That's it. That's the village. The village is in a valley along the Rio Grande River. It's a, a bit of an oasis of green in the middle of the desert. The river is less than a quarter of a mile away to the east, and then further to the east are a chain of mountains, and on the west are some sandy cliffs, and uh, at the top of those cliffs is the mesa, which is the high desert, and it stretches really for as far as you can see. The most striking thing about this landscape is how isolated it is. Really the only landmarks are power lines and telephone lines and uh, freight trains, and the freight trains can be really, you know, miles long. So you that's really the main thing that you, you see and you notice in this landscape. Uh, living in a, a farming community, you come to see how dependent we are on the weather. In the spring, the winds are really high, and sometimes I'll find unusual plant pods and things like bird's nests that are blown onto my property, and I'm finding that these plant pods are starting to come up in my work. And I would say that they're um, probably stand-ins for the human figure. I think the concerns that I have uh, when I was painting the figure uh, are probably still the same. I'm just using um, plants and other objects in place of the figure. Uh, one of the most amazing things about New Mexico is the sky. It's often this unbelievable blue, or in stormy weather, you can see the clouds forming from miles away. Sometimes you can be standing in the sun, and 20 or so miles away, you'll see these lightning storms and huge clouds and this rain streaking down in black streaks from the clouds. But at night, there there isn't much of any ambient light, so you'll see thousands of stars. It's really the kind of place that if you were flying cross-country and you happened to look down, you'd see a sea of blackness everywhere and then isolated little strings of lights. What I get a sense of living here is that these power lines and telephone lines and freight trains are all moving away across and towards either of the coasts. So New Mexico, in a way, is the space between. This isolation is really striking. At, at many points in my life, the perception of absence of action or absence from of interest from the rest of the world would have disturbed me, made me feel like I was missing something. But mostly, though, what I feel is a peace and a sense of freedom that comes from that lack of interest or regard. So I try to just pay attention to what's at hand, what I'm working on. And I think those things are starting to creep into my work now, that sense of freedom and peacefulness. Um, I should say a little bit about the material that these paintings are, are made with. It's encaustic, which is an ancient material and a process that's had, um, it's been around since probably the fifth century, but it's fallen out of use and, and has had a resurgence in the last 15 or so years. The word encaustic describes the material which is beeswax mixed with a damar resin to make a medium and it also describes the process of fusing the medium with heat. This medium is heated and applied in a melted liquidy state to a rigid surface like a wood panel and as each layer is, up, is applied it's fused to the previous layers with a torch or a heat gun. The medium itself is semi-transparent with a little bit of an amber tint, but it can be mixed with dry pigments to make a range of colors. Uh, so if you see color in an encaustic painting, it's usually 
the wax itself. It's not paint or any other material like that. Um, the paintings in this show reflect just a few of the ways that I've been using encaustic. <laughs> 